Hello again, fearless gamers. This is Matt the Clown, coming back with the joy of painting minis. And once again, we're here with our Infinity Panoceana Acullus Seek Trooper. And uh, once again, I'm going to go over the colors we've been using for this guy. Right now, you'll notice most of his base coat has been done in Gnarls Green. There we go. Uh, which we will eventually be up uh, shading. Shading? Highlighting, sorry guys, highlighting into Josan Green. We've started his gun in Rulik Gold, which we will eventually be highlighting up to Solid Gold. We'll be doing his pants and a couple other minor details in Beaten Purple, which we will eventually be highlighting back up to itself after washing. Possibly do a mix of it and Scorn Red, like a one-to-one -one mix. Uh, nothing serious. Um... And then when it's time, once I've got them all base coated, I'm going to give them a, a light wash of Agrax Earthshade from Citadel Paint. Uh, all, the main, all the paints we're using, aside from the wash, are from the P3 line. Unfortunately, I can't really give you equivalents uh, in Citadel Paints. So if you don't have P3 paints, you know, if you want to try for this color scheme, good luck. Uh, I know the Gnarls Green is like a nice Hunter Green, and the Josan Green is like a nice Jade. Uh, but gold is gold, you know. Uh, incidentally, part of the reason I've elected to choose to go with a brown wash is because uh, gold factors in fairly heavily with this color scheme. Uh, I'll show you. This is another one of the guys who's a work in progress for this army. And uh, you'll notice his gun and many bits of his armor are being done in gold. He still needs highlighting, but he's not involved in this. He's the orc trooper, incidentally. Um, anyway... Uh, gold is a brown tone, primarily, uh, when it comes to the shadows. So rather than uh, wash him in my usual black, I'm going to wash him in brown. So, uh, also, again, I like to listen to stuff in the background when I paint. Uh, I've got a little bit of, of a YouTuber named Heather Feather on in the background right now. Um, I hope it's not too distracting. Back to it. going to go into the rule of gold again. And get back at this gun. I don't love the P3 metallic paints. Um, they're not great, but I wanted to stick with P3 for the consistency of the line. And I really like Rulik Gold. It's just that the, the metallic paints on P3 come out so thin and so weird. <laughs> they're, they're really not great. So you really have to get in there with multiple coats, and they behave so oddly that, um, you know, I don't really like them. And I've, I've heard that a lot of people don't like them, so I'm, I'm wondering if eventually they're going to change the formula for them. But we'll have to find that out in due time, as we won't find that out by the end of this episode, because this episode's only going to be 30 minutes long. And it is currently 12.30 in the morning. Uh, I like to paint late sometimes, <laughs> so it's not like we're going to get a press release from P3 in the middle of the night saying, Hey guys, new metallic paint formula. It's not going to happen. Being a little bit silly tonight, I apologize. Actually, no. No, I don't apologize. Sometimes you got to be silly. Sometimes you got to be a goofy guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. The idea for this series, um, basically, the vet wanted to do, I mean, I'd been considering it for a while, but the vet uh, brought it up, so he gets the credit. <laughs> uh, the vet wanted us to have a weekly painting series, because we had been having trouble lately uh, keeping week weekly content on the channel that wasn't the podcast. Uh, life has happened to pretty much all of us. So, uh, it's been difficult for us to even do Touching Base, which is a shame, because I personally am a big fan of Touching Base as a concept. I think it's sort of our flagship sh series, and it's been a shame to see it uh, sort of languish in uh, sort of limbo, in perpetuity, as it were. Um, you know, the, the Stark Lord, Phil, I think he's calling himself Phil these days. 
uh, he's a teacher. So he doesn't have a whole lot of free time lately. Um, he's a science teacher, and he's got a lot on his plate. So, making the time to come out on a Sunday, which is usually when we used to film Touching Base, uh, or even really any day of the week, because he's living... Uh, he's not living on Long Island anymore. He's actually living out in Brooklyn these days. So now it's train fare, too, for him to come out, and he's broke. <laughs> Teachers don't make enough money, guys. Um, but yeah, for him to come and do the filming, it's it's a bit more of an ordeal than it used to be. Um, the uh, the wild card, James, he, uh, he moved down to North Carolina, as we mentioned in a recent video, for school. He's uh, He's working on cars, I believe. And he eventually wants to do... I just got a message on Steam. Uh, he eventually wants to do uh, work on monster trucks, which is super dope, but does not involve doing touching base every month. So he's been busy with that. No, you know, no judgment on that. You know, all the power to him. He's got a dream and he's chasing it. Uh, really, the, the vet and I are the only ones who can consistently be free on a Sunday. And if it's just going to be the two of us, touching base is going to kind of be crappy. Because, well, it'll either be two guys agreeing with each other, or two guys disagreeing with each other. And it won't go anywhere, and it won't be any good. That's part of why we brought uh, my buddy Rob, which, you know, I don't know if he's going to end up with a title like Clown or Vet. Um, but that's part of why we brought him on, because we felt that a new perspective, as well as an extra butt to put in a seat, would help us revitalize the uh, the channel and our content a little bit. Uh, Rob, incidentally, is a big fan of Magic the Gathering, um, so that's probably going to be some of the stuff he brings to the table, uh, at least discussion about that. I know he plays mostly Magic online these days. doesn't really play in person as much as he used to. I'm not really certain of the reasoning. You'd have to ask him. Uh, I don't think he has his own YouTube channel, like the rest of us do, even though mine is completely inactive. Uh, you've noticed I've gone on to doing uh, detail work <laughs> for the Rule of Gold. I'm just kind of picking and choosing spots for it uh, that I think would look cool. So, uh, feel free to go, what are you doing? And do things differently than I am. But, uh, but yeah, so he'll, he'll bring card game stuff to the table primarily, which is fine, because we have been wanting to branch out from minis and war games to other tabletop games such as uh, card games like Magic and um, you know Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Uh, I'll be running a Pathfinder game sometime in the coming year and I'm considering recording it for the channel. I don't know yet. It's gonna be a little chaotic so I don't know if I want to do it but if I decide to do it, you guys will have an interesting thing to listen to every week as it will just be done audio, no video for it. Hell, maybe I'll stream it if I can get a decent internet connection. Uh, the internet in my house is notoriously bad. I'm just kind of throwing paint on here, by the way. Um, I don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> but yeah, the internet in my house is notoriously bad. Um, we recently moved the router from the basement to my brother's old room, which is now just sort of a potential guest room if we have somebody sleeping over, which isn't as common as it used to be, as, you know, as kids get older, you don't necessarily have friends sleeping over as often. I'm going to make the hilt on this knife gold. Screw it. That's the, yeah, that's the stuff. And I'll make, ooh, knocking him over. I think I'll make the, the scabbard on it. Uh, I'll probably use coal black. I like coal black a lot. Uh, maybe I'll use Thamar black and highlight it into coal black. I don't know. Um, where was I? I don't remember. What's the time? Nine minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, so, now I need to think of something else to talk about, Fearless Gamers, because I lost my place. Um, yeah, wow, I really did. So, topic change. 
Uh, I recently watched The Grand Budapest Hotel for the first time. Now, if you're not a fan of Wes Anderson films, which I am a fan of Wes Anderson films, but I understand that they're a little um, strange. <laughs> and not everybody likes them because they're so strange. Um, if you're not a fan, then you probably won't like it. It's very, very Wes Anderson. Uh, you know, it has a lot of uh, that sort of weird, almost otherworldly quality to it. Um, that I happen to love. Uh, I'm a big fan of, for example, of the Fantastic Mr. Fox. If you don't know that movie, go uh, get it <laughs> on DVD, or at least go try and rent it. Or I don't think it's on Netflix, unfortunately, which is really one of the greatest crimes of, of our time. Uh, I'm adding purple to the pants now, guys. Uh, but yeah, the Grand Budapest Hotel is, I think it was last year it came out, maybe the year before. I don't remember exactly when it came out. It was either 2013 or 2014. Probably 2014. Um, but yeah, it was on HBO On Demand, which is something that my parents have at their house, where I am currently living, as my fiancé and I do not have a place yet. Uh, but yeah, I saw it was on HBO On Demand, and I said to, my, said to myself, well, you really like Ray Fiennes, you really like Wes Anderson. You really like Jude Law. <laughs> Why aren't you watching this movie right now? So I put the movie on. And I watched the movie. And I really, really enjoyed the movie. <laughs> um, for those of you unfamiliar with the plot of the film, it follows the concierge of a hotel called the Grand Budapest Hotel. Um... I think it's set in Germany. I don't really remember. I mean, it's a Wes Anderson movie, so the the a lot of the setting is completely fictional and made up, but sounds real. So it could theoretically be in a place that doesn't exist. Um, and it was hard to figure out exactly where it was because everyone was speaking in British accents, um, except for like Bill Murray, who showed up for like thirty seconds. And Owen Wilson, who showed up for 30 seconds. And, um, oh, that other constant Wes Anderson actor, whose name I can't remember, who was in, I believe he was in Rushmore, and, uh, and the Darjeeling Limited, which is another great movie. If you get the chance, I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, it follows the concierge, played by Rafe Fiennes, which... By the way, apparently his name isn't Ralph Fiennes, it's Rafe Fiennes, which I find fascinating, because I didn't know that was a real name, <laughs> and I'd been calling him Ralph for years, until corrected by an old friend from school. Anyway, he plays the concierge of the uh, Grand Budapest, and it sort of follows his misadventures uh, in the face of adversity. I'm not going to spoil the rest of the plot as uh, it kind of hits the ground running, as it were. It introduces you to the setting, it introduces you to the characters, and then it's off. You know, it goes. It doesn't beat around the bush like a lot of movies do. And I've decided I'm just going to do the uh, scabbard, or sheath rather, it's not a scabbard for a knife. The sheath for this knife. I don't know if you can see it. Because my lighting options in this particular space are crap. <laughs> I'm going to do it in coal black. I'm a big fan of coal black from the P3 line. Uh, once again, I consider it to be some serious uh, wizard material. I would call it what I really want to call it, but I'm trying to keep this as family-friendly as possible. Uh, not, that I think, not that I think any 10-year-olds you know, are going to be watching. Um, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, I just did that in coal black. I think I've got him fully base coated at this point, save for like little bits in like the nooks and crannies that are difficult to get to, even if I hadn't put them together completely. And let me explain to you. <laughs> uh, rather, let me not. Let me not explain to you. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be like that. But let me. Let me go over. Uh, a lot of people will disagree on whether you should fully assemble your model or partially assemble your model or not at all assemble your model. 
I used to be of the mind that you shouldn't fully assemble it, you shouldn't assemble your model at all, because then how are you going to paint the whole thing? And then I started partially assembling, uh, because it was faster, and now I'm at the point where I fully assemble. My thoughts behind fully assembling, I'm cleaning my brush at the moment, uh, the, the reasoning behind fully assembling, at least for me, is that if there's somewhere I can't get with the brush, uh, and I will try to get to the nooks and crannies, but if there's something that, despite all of my efforts, I can't get to, A, nobody's really going to see it, and B, the wash will do the work. The wash that is meant to bring in, to, to, the way I do it at least, the wash puts the shades in, so uh, the wash will do that work for me. It'll get into those nooks and crannies and give them a splash of paint. I'm looking, there it is. I don't know if this is the real one, but it's one of them. I'm putting a little plastic nub back on my brush real quick because I'm done with this particular brush at the moment. Now, oh, nope, that was not the correct one, and it was too short. Great. Wow, yeah, this is a riveting episode of, uh, of, <laughs> of The Joy of Painting Minis as I search for the little plastic tube that goes around your brush. A lot of people throw these away, and I used to throw them away, and I drop it on the floor. I used to throw them away. I'm so fat. Okay. But, uh, in the interest of keeping my nice brushes nice, I have decided to start keeping them. So let me sheath my blade, as it were. Stick it back where it belongs. I'm going to give this guy a minute to dry. Um, I, I've... oh, well... Crap. I was going to do those in purple. Let me use a slightly different brush. Because I just cleaned that other one. Let me use a brush I don't care about. I don't care about this brush, um, but it'll do the job. So, once this guy dries at the current state he's in, I'm going to nail him with a wash. And that is where I'm going to have to cut that episode, because watching a wash dry is stupid. I'm sorry, I'm not doing this in front of the camera because it's a really small detail spot, and it's like a two-second thing. Um, now I'm noticing... Now that I can look closer, because usually when I paint, I'm like really super hunched over my model. Um, one of the shoulders needs a little more gold. I'm going to do that off camera as well. I apologize, but it's for the sake of the final product. There we go. And we'll nail that spot and that spot. Boy, I'm being really interesting right now. Sorry, guys. Okay, cool. So, once he dries, I'm going to give that a minute. I'm going to hit him with the wash. Then the wash is going to have to dry. Now, if you wash something heavily... Oh, I hit the camera. Guys, I apologize. I'm going to shift it back over. There we go. If you wash something heavily, you should probably leave it overnight. If you wash it light, give it like a half hour to an hour. Um, because washes are super wet super loose. They're basically water. Um, but if you don't let them dry long enough, you're just going to mess everything up. So, this episode is currently at 18 minutes. So this will actually go well, because this will take me a few minutes to prep the wash, prep the wash, brush. Now, when I wash, I use a brush like this one which is from Princeton Art and Brush Company. I need, I bought a new one of these that I'm going to start, need to start using soon because this one's gotten a little beaten up. I stopped taking care of it like a smart guy. <laughs> um, but basically, let me show you the new one, <clears throat> the fresh one. Take that off. You can see it's got a point. Um, you're going to want to use a round, which is basically just a bigger version of the small brushes you'll be, you use on your models. Um, I like to use a bigger brush for washes because it holds more of the actual wash and thus I, I can just go blah, 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 blah. Uh, I like to do it all at once really fast sort of just hand grenade kind of thing I think it's dried enough so I'm gonna just start washing it watch watch it just take all the paint off I've had that happen before by the way which is why I recommend waiting for your minis to dry before you wash them 
because I've had situations where I will be painting a mini and I will be impatient and it will start stripping the wet paint off with the wash which is a friggin nightmare to fix now I see there's a detail I forgot to get to I was gonna get some of the armor in here with a gold uh, sort of inlay kind of look I can fix that after the wash dries there's no point in this hobby where it's too late to go back and fix something even if it means you have to go back rebase something wash it again after that and then re-highlight even if it means you gotta go in with your hobby knife and strip some of the paint off even if it means throwing your minis in a vat of simple green and completely stripping them down to the to the bare metal bare plastic bare resin bare wood? I don't know it's really just plastic, resin, and metal uh, I think that's everything so yeah, I just gotta go bleh, bleh, bleh. rinse the brush off and we're gonna wait for that to dry so when we come back that will have dried always clean your brushes by the way kids Bob Ross did it, you should do it too um, oh that's a point I was gonna try and make earlier uh, yeah we wanted a weekly uh, content on the channel and it was becoming somewhat more difficult so it was decided that we may as well just record ourselves while we paint because we're gonna be painting quite a bit anyway uh, even after I'm done with my actual Infinity Army, uh, my, my combined army units, uh, I have a second army waiting in the wings, and then I've just got a bunch of uh, little models, like uh, this thing that I got off of Shapeways recently. Oh, the sword's a little screwy. Great. Uh, this thing I got off of Shapeways uh, that are just I'm just going to paint for fun. You know? That's what I like to do. I like to paint. It's my favorite part of the hobby. <laughs> so you'll be getting a lot of joy of painting from me it's essentially an endless supply of content for you guys so I hope you guys are enjoying this series um, I didn't look at the numbers on uh, the vets uh, series for it so I really don't know whether or not it's been a popular series but I know he enjoyed doing it I know I'm enjoying doing it and um, yeah until next time guys this is gonna be a short episode unfortunately um, but until next time, Fearless Gamers, I may have missed a spot. I'm probably going to give this guy another coat of the wash, by the way. I usually do two coats uh, on my combined army, which I'll be taking photos of eventually. I've been doing like three coats of the black. <laughs> I'm going for a very specific look, but for these guys, I'm going to probably get them to do one coat, maybe two coats of the, uh, the brown wash. So before the next episode starts, I will finish the washing phase. Uh, and until next time, Fearless Gamers, Take care.